California College of the Arts is located on Huichin and Yolamo, also known as Oakland and San Francisco, respectively, on the unceded territories of Chochenyo and Ramatush Ohlone peoples who have continuously lived on this land since time immemorial. Most of you know we're now in San Francisco entirely, but I feel like our heart is still partly in Oakland, so I'm including that. We recognize the historic discrimination and violence inflicted upon indigenous peoples in California and the Americas, including their forced removal from ancestral lands and the deliberate and systematic destruction of their communities and culture. CCA honors indigenous peoples past, present and future here and around the world. And we wish to pay respects to local elders, including those of the lands from which you are joining us virtually today. If you are unsure of whose land you are currently residing upon, we encourage you to visit native-land.ca. All right, so our format for today, to bring everybody up to the program, is that each artist has the opportunity to present for 10 minutes, then uh, I will respond in conjunction with our guest respondent. Uh, actually, we have two joining us now, Taro Hattori, who's the chair of sculpture, and Vicki Jang, who's coming to us from Seattle, Washington. Vicki was an MFA, is an MFA alum, and I remember the first time we met was at the airport in Seattle. There was a ceramics conference there, and I think Vicki just came up and introduced herself to me. And I feel like this is relevant for all you seniors in the professional practice class because uh, it, it's in line with our, our theme of the semester, which is to work hard and be friendly. And Vicki just came up to me in a very friendly way and introduced herself. <laughs> she came here for a master's degree and then since then has been teaching at the Maryland Institute at MICA. And um, and then now at the University of Washington, and she's shown her work all over the place and uh, has stayed in touch with me. And so I was thinking about who would be the best kind of guest for today. And as you'll see, as we go through the artists, their work is in kind of radically different places that reflect the range of work that CCA offers and, and helps students with. So uh, picking somebody who could speak to all those things was not simple, but I think uh, Vicki's work really offers the same range and is an exciting person to have join us today. So thanks for being here, Vicki. Thank you. Thank you. And hello to Taro, who's joining us from the Sculpture Studio. Okay, so our list of artists are uh, Sky Battles, and then Sinai and Pi and Madison. So I'm going to hand it off. I'll be the timekeeper. If you get to that 10 minute mark, I'll let you know, Sky. Okay. All right. I'm looking forward to these. Oh, the last thing to say is all of our guests from are welcome to um, contribute to the chat, offer your um, reflections on the work or Congratulations or anything you want, but we're going to keep the audio feedback to the respondents and myself. Okay, go ahead, Sky. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Sky Battles, and I'm going to share my screen first. Can everyone see that? Yes, everyone yes. See that? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so as I said, my name is Sky Battles and I'm an individualized major here at CCA. And I first of all wanted to thank everyone for being here. This is, um, yeah, to reflect on my work. I'm really grateful to have um, a lot of my family here and my friends. Um, and yeah, this photo is from uh, before I came to CCA um, 2015 and is um, kind of showcases um, the themes in my work. I'm just gonna pull up my notes here. So a little bit about me before we get into my work. Um, this photo on the left is a self-portrait I took in one of my first classes in my first semester at CCA with Sydney Cohen, the 2D class. And um, she really encouraged me to get into textiles, which was something that I continued exploring 
um, throughout CCA along with fine art photography and community arts. Um, on the upper right, you'll see a photo of my work um, a couple years before I came to CCA, and I think really highlights some major themes in my work, including um, drama television, color, um, and set design, as well as working with a community. And then below are um, photos of my family, and um, my housemates are in the bottom right corner, which will be important later on as I talk about um, my photo series on co-ops in the Bay Area. So before we get into that, um, here are a couple of my influences. Um, being dyslexic growing up, I definitely gravitated more towards photo books and artwork. And I was fortunate enough that um, both my moms really loved photography. So I was exposed to really stunning photography like Cindy Sherman and Kathy Opie from a young age and saw the kind of impact that photography could have and was capable of. Um, additionally, I'm very inspired by the set design from Mad Men and other shows like Six Feet Under um, and Gregory Crutzen and the way he plays with narrative and set design. And I'm going to focus a little bit on Kathy Opie for a second and the way that she explores community through her photography practice was really inspiring to me. Um, and it's something that has been a constant for me throughout my work, um, beginning with photographing my awkward teenage friends in LA to us growing up into teenagers and documenting that through my style to um, this series that I started a year before I attended CCA, um, which is on co-ops in the Bay Area. And this um, co-op or intentional living community is called Ubuntu and is the first co-op I lived in. And it was 30 people with 30 plus chandeliers. And I was 19 when I moved in. Um, and yeah, and so I feel like this image really highlights the part of the series that this was a really big collaborative effort to create this series. Um, and it really blurs the line between um, is this reality, is this curated? And that's a major theme that I play with throughout the series. This is also from the Bay Area Co-op series. Um, this is an installation I did for an immersive art festival um, that takes over an entire hotel and does immersive art installations um, in each room. And um, this was just a documentation shot of installation that I put up um, based off of suburbia. Um, and this was just a documentation photo, but I think it um, helps capture the idea of space, which is something that I really like to explore in my work. Um, both through photography and my community arts practice. Um, I love thinking about um, space and how community engages with it. And what does it mean? What does space mean with the absence of people in it? And there we go. And uh, this is the last image I'm gonna show from the co-op series, which is a self-portrait um, in a house that was being renovated to become a co-op. And I've woven myself into a couple images throughout the series. Um, in entirety, there's 15 images, and I'll be showing um, this next image, which was um, the installation at Soma Arts recently for a group senior show. It was such a beautiful night for me to connect with so many people that I love over, you know, this culmination of this work that I've been, um, the series that I've been producing for like five years now. And um, as I said, there's 15 images. And I would love to show it more in other galleries um, where I can show more of the body of work. And also, I wanted to comment that the set um, was also important to me as I really love set design and designing for community spaces. Um, all of these items are sentimental to me and are either from a community um, or are sentimental to me and my experience living in these intentional living communities. So, when I started living in intentional communities, specifically when I was at the Red Victorian for two years, my housemates saw that my photography could translate well to set design um, and community building and events. So these are just a couple of images of some set design, some installations I've done um, over the years. And um, this last one on the right was from the Red Victorian where I lived for two years. And this was a collaboration with my housemate who also went to CCA like 10 years earlier than me and was a big um, influence in my choice to go to CCA. And I do have a lot of textiles work from CCA as well as well as some film work. But for the sake of time, I'm just gonna show this one image of my textiles work that feels um, related to community. 
um, I had just bought these pants and then the day after I was bleaching my friend Bernice's hair and I got bleach all over my pants so I um, did these patches on top of it um, as a way to kind of commemorate um, times I've had with my housemates and people I consider family or chosen family like times I've had with them in nature and um, yeah and I hope to expand on this project um, over the years kind of like patchwork tattoos um, so yeah so I really loved the CCA textiles community I felt like I not only learned a lot about textiles but also a lot about community um, through those classes which was really great and outside of school, professionally, and what I'm thinking of doing once I, I leave, um, I've been working at a couple different museums across the city part time as an event coordinator um, at the De Young, the Legion of Honor, and recently SF MoMA. And this has been really fun. And um, as you'll see in the bottom row, um, there's some lighting images, those kind of bookend images are from uh, two events where they let me do some lighting design. So I'm hoping to kind of take um, my career path in museums in a more creative direction. I've been meeting with uh, people in different departments to kind of see where I fit. Um, and this kind of middle bottom image is from a, um, uh, a video shoot that we did. And that's um, an avenue I'm really interested in as well as doing um, more photography. Um, with museums and more for Harvey and video with museums and also um, continuing my uh, fine art photography, but also my commissioned work. I've been doing um, a few commission shoots recently. Um, at the top, you'll see Pai's work who we'll be talking with soon. Um, this was really fun and I love her work. So I also wanna start another series on um, female bodied artists in my community. So that feels like a, a, an interesting next step for me. Um, for my fine art photography and community building. And then below um, are some images I've done of uh, events recently at a gallery and event space um, in the Mission, Uze Gallery. It's a really great space that you should definitely check out as well. So to wrap up, again, I want to thank everyone for being here. And I want to say that it, it took a village to get here. And I'm so grateful for everyone. <laughs> Sorry, a little bit. But yeah, I'm really grateful for these people um, for helping me get here. And yeah, I want to thank you again for your time and I'm looking forward to your feedback. Um, I would love to keep in touch and this is an easy QR code for you to use or you can also um, look up these links. Thank you. Thanks, Guy, that was great. I think it's the first time I've seen a thank you slide that says 100 plus housemates, which <laughs> could also be a good title for your next show. That's um, true. I'm going to hand that off to Vicky and then maybe Taro. Yeah, there's, there's so much that you've shared and I appreciate the generousness that you, you know, what you shared with us today with all the work. Seems like you've really took advantage of your stint at CCA. It's a huge investment. And yeah, there's a lot that I can see in your exploration experience and how involved you are on understanding building community, which I think CCA does provide. Um, I One thing specific I was interested in, because I relate to this, in a deep level in my research is when you touched on um, the sentimental things, you know, I'm curious on how you like would personally define it and how you procure it. Mm, that's a great, yeah, that's a great question. And thank you, those, thank you for your kind words. Um, yeah, I love collecting little items. I have items from childhood. I just, yeah, I kind of am a little toy hoarder. And um, yeah, I love just keepsakes. I have a memory box. And I think that's a really important aspect that keeps me going and feeling connected and continuing to show the people I've connected with that I'm grateful for their presence in my life. Mm -hmm. And like your photos that like there's, a con there's something consistent, which I like 
have more appreciation of the artist just with the the images that you shared because it's all about like particularities and you were very specific on many things although like each image were so varied so in just photos that you shared itself it was diverse you know that's pretty strong overall when you have like a first impression um and like even the specificity in the dimensions and the framing um and like the joy you have and the criticalness that you have about installation and space is you know is very convincing and materiality too and how you play with that um when you capture the image itself um yeah let me uh thank you let me respond on um several aspects but the um you you always like try to capture the fine line between kind of several different things one i started seeing uh, from the beginning of your work too is the the environment and people and if environment is making people or the people are making the environment you know those kind of like a um balance di dynamics um between those the people and environment and also the uh later in your work that i started seeing is it documentation of a community or the more like the documentation is the uh, actually making the community because mm -hmm. the you're showing something and then for the community so actually the um, not only the passively documenting the, your, the the community, more like the kind of that activity itself is the making of the community. So um, that th those two things are mainly the, what I'm always interested in in your practice. And so um, it totally makes sense, right? So you kind of like a, did like a set design and you were also into the uh, Catherine Opie's work. Then um, so the people is always there. And then you are interested in how you can put yourself in that uh, environment and also the people. Um, I have actually a question and I want to learn something from you is that you've been involved in those communities. Uh, and then I think that especially after the pandemic and also, I have known some people who have been in, been involved in such communities recently. The, things kind of started changing in our, um, uh, you know, San Francisco these days. Some communities had been had disappeared, and um, kind of this utopian idea it seems to be changing nowadays. How do you observe that change that you experience um, currently, and then also the how that change may influence the way you work in the future. Hmm. That is a really interesting question. I really like that com comment you made on community making. I feel like that's a good way to explain mm -hmm. my work, but I haven't found that nugget yet. So thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, I think it is really interesting what's happened since COVID. That image with all of the naked people that was shot during COVID mm -hmm. and that house shut down afterwards, like a few months later. Um, I think the main thing I've noticed in community is that, and I've noticed this with in relation, just in relationships with everyone is like, we, how do I put this? It's like, we only, we were only really connecting with the people that were the most valuable to us. And I think we like learned like, who's really there for us. And I think that also made people be like, I don't like people who are maybe in like really party houses be like, you know what, I'm actually more introverted and I want to have an introvert house. And this is what I want in my life. And so I think, yeah, I think that is an interesting, sh people are just more kind of like assured in themselves and what they want um, from that experience um, and who's close to them. So I think maybe that could make it a little bit harder to get into like more niche communities because people maybe are a little bit more closed off. Um, but yeah, this is, I wonder how that will influence my work going forward. Yeah, because I would like to explore other communities as well. I'm very much looking forward to it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Todd. Nathan, you're mute. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I, I love that image 
uh, view in the dress in front of the wallpaper that's the same. Yeah, that's great. And I hadn't seen that before. Uh, so I want to say just keep uh, keep taking a picture of yourself along the way as you also document communities or do these installations. And I don't, in that last set of six that you showed us of event spaces, I think there was one of you in the top middle. I don't know if that's true, if that's you or not, but even that I like seeing and you're in a work mode, but whether it be, whether it's part of your work or not, I feel like the the way that you're representing your work in the world, it's important to keep doing that along the way, whether or not you present it as studio gallery work doesn't matter so much. Um, and the other thing that I enjoyed about seeing those work images is the way that uh, it doesn't seem to be two things happening, right? It seems to be like a, a line blend of your studio practice and your sort of work for employment. Mm -hmm. And I'm interested to see moving forward how they kind of bleed into each other and feed off each other. And um, yeah, I, th I think it's great that you found a way to sort of have employment with it that relates to the context of your work. I really liked that part about your presentation and your the photographs are gorgeous. Um, I have one question about your show, I think, which is like, how, how did you decide what part of the props or the sentimental objects to include with that set of photographs? Was that a difficult mm. kind of picking that suite of objects seems like it could be challenging to me. Yeah, so I loved, we did that, well, not the studio visit, but the gallery visit with Annie Duncan, and I really liked what she said about where she just brought all of her ceramics to the show to, like, kind of play around with, so I, I did that with, like, a lot of different items that had sentimental value, a big box, um, but I also thought it was important, as I discussed with Taro, to include, like, the phone, the red phone is in the set, and it's also in the images, so, like, these little Easter eggs for people to find. Yeah. Nice. Um, I want to go back on the themes that you shared, um, when it comes to even the artists that you shared in the beginning, like immediately, I think like this person's really interested in very, or inspired by subversive themes. Um, and it's all these artists, you know, continue to uh, capture a form of like, identity and there I think it's hard to you know I wanted to see what advice you would give or uh, what process helps you continue to um, produce work when the subject matter is quite difficult um, you know when sub subject like themes like identity gender politics mm. um, yeah yeah, I think I, I want to be diving more into, I think I do want to do a, a series more focused on gender and gender politics um, as well. That's something I'm wanting to dive in more. I think, hmm. yeah, I think it's, it's having a balance of processing what's going on in my life personally and allowing that to happen and uh, knowing that the work will also happen. And it's okay if I need to take pauses and knowing that I can come back and I'll have a, a new perspective given the insights I've gained through reflection. It's interesting because like the photo of your your roommates, the um, room service, what was it? Yes, oh, or that was Ubuntu. Ubuntu? Yeah, like I, it's unfortunate because I really wanted to take time looking at that image. There's a lot going on, you know, um, it's so detail oriented just by like first impression. Um, could you tell me more about that image? Because you have like, you know, built such a community and had these people, uh, you know, you curated the image and these people were involved. How was that experience? And, you know, would you continue to do that? Right. Yeah, that is an interesting, yeah, it has been interesting. Each house I go into to collaborate and photograph with, I usually know like one person pretty well who's currently living there. 
And so I connect with them. And then they're usually who help me get like everyone else kind of comfortable being in front of a camera because a lot of people aren't comfortable in front of a camera. And um, so with that, I my friend Sophie, who's also a photographer, I was like, um, I went in, it's COVID, you know, and I was like, I, you know, I'd really like one person to be naked. Um, but if you're not comfortable with it, like, that's fine. And then everyone's like, I want to be naked. <laughs> and everyone signed consent forms. Um, and that's how um, that image happened. But it's been really interesting to see, like some communities are more like, want to be more hands-on and like producing the image and others are like, just tell me what to do. Um, yeah. I appreciate it. Just seeing that image itself really um, defines like the students that are involved at CCA are very serious, you know. Yeah, very true. Thank you. All right, thanks, Guy. Appreciate that. I'm gonna uh, move us along here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and I I think Mickey put in an order, but I'm gonna just go back to the order slightly different order because that's what was on the uh, announcement. So Sanai, do you mind going next? And then we'll have Pi and then we'll end with Madison. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let me share my screen with you guys. Can everybody see this? Yeah, your audio is a little fuzzy. I don't know if you can adjust it at all. Um, I can speak up, is that better? Yeah, that's a little better, okay. thank you. Um, hello, my name is Sanayal Pazelon. Uh, I am an individualized major at CCA um, with an emphasis in fashion and film. Um, and I titled my presentation today, The Four Movements of the Sun, Exploring Cycles of Diasporic Identity Through Pan-Africanism, um, as kind of the culmination of many of the themes that um, permeate in the art practice and have marked my development here at CCA. Um, during the last like, five years or so. Um, and so this is me. Um, this is also how my name is properly written um, in Giz uh, from Ethiopia. Uh, I view my name as a displaced artifact um, in the sense that um, I am an African born in the United States. Um, I'm also the second of my name. I'm a junior. Um, I'm from Oakland. Um, I was born in Sacramento, but I moved to Oakland when I was very young. Um, my parents and grandparents and most of my community are artists, educators, um, and entrepreneurs. Um, and I have found myself as all of the above, um, and many are, are more than one. Uh, my father's parents uh, met in the Black Panther Party, and that really impacted uh, our worldview as a family um, and also my art practice. Um, I get a lot of inspiration from nature, um, from heritage, and uh, from the environment that I live in, uh, being from an industrial neighborhood as well. Um, and so when I was preparing this presentation, um, I was looking at old presentations, and I found this that I did in indie mentorship, uh, I want to say my sophomore or junior year. And at, at this time, my practice was kind of about me looking at things on spectrums and about uh, how opposing ideas um, interact with each other. But it was a very linear um, kind of way of doing things. And what I've learned from my time here is that my understanding of the world has advanced from lines to circles uh, and from one to two dimensions and you know three and four and so on. And so this is a kind of collage that I made uh, for that. And um, also in, um, oh, I'll just do that later. Um, in 2019, uh, I lost my best friend to gun violence uh, during like a robbery. Um, and I think that really changed my worldview and um, also just, you know, interrupted uh, my life substantially uh, as I was kind of in the middle of my studies at CCA. Um, and so my work changed a lot after that. And um, I began to uh, develop a greater understanding of death and of cycles and things like that, which I think really feeds into the kind of work that I'll be talking about today. And so uh, currently my work builds, builds a visual language and framework that empowers oppressed people to claim agency. 
uh, centering the Black post-colonial experience and utilizing imagery and concepts to draw from Afrofuturism. I extend our narratives past the adverse circumstances that have characterized our existence. In the spirit of Pan-Africanism, I work to create spaces of forward thinking, unity, and collective growth while honoring the diversity in our cultural expressions across the African diaspora. And although my work, uh, my practice centers the African diaspora, uh, my work draws lines through and across cultural and geographic bounds, um, illuminating essential pillars of human existence. And I intend to cultivate an environment where all people are seen, respected, and connected through the work I make, encompassing a global narrative of communal peace and prosperity. Um, and so this is, you know, my current artist statement and just the the philosophy uh, behind my work, because I think that's a lot more important than uh, the tools that I use, because they vary. Um, and whatever tools are available to me, or whatever tools are necessary to tell a story or or accomplish something, are the tools that I'm going to use, which is why I'm in the indie program. Um, and so, my most recent uh, body of work is, um, and I think this is the, the the core of my practice currently, um, is the. Cos uh, Congo Cosmogram uh, from Central Africa. And um, after my friend had passed, uh, one of my elders uh, sent this to me and it just like really changed uh, my, my work graphically. And the, the Bakongo believe and hold it true that life has no end, that it constitutes a cycle. The sun in, in its rising and setting is a sign of this cycle and death is merely a transition in the process of this cycle. And so this uh, diagram is basically the, the, the known universe, separating the land of the living from the land of the dead as we pass through and around and come back in cycles of reincarnation, as well as cycles of the planet, uh, you know, with, with nature in that and uh, the four elements. And so it's a very quintessential and just core uh, philosophical artifact um, that has inspired my most recent work. And so um, for my senior exhibition, I uh, showed a film that I made. Um, I've been working on it for a couple of years, kind of taking on it, re-editing it and so on. And um, it features uh, a lot of footage that I shot in Senegal um, during a trip a few years ago, where there were folks uh, engaged in ritual where they would walk and dance and sing in a circle. Um, but I juxtapose that with uh, people driving in circles uh, on, on a traffic circle, which is that same kind of movement, but not ritual and kind of questioning what ritual means uh, in the sense that in the African worldview, ritual is something that we do all the time and not just something that we reserve for uh, church or ceremony or things like that. Um, and then there's also imagery of things being upside down and reversed um, as the lower half of that circle is the mirror image of our current reality. Um, and then the, there's also iconography of water um, as a person of African descent, you know, uh, and a descendant of, of slavery. Um, the Atlantic Ocean both separates and connects our diaspora. Um, and I'm also like, uh, I have a water dominant astrological chart as well. So a lot of water imagery is uh, present in my work. And so this is my installation. Um, I built a traditional altar uh, with uh, nine glasses, a single larger glass, and two candles atop a white sheet with flowers. Um, that is how things are done in the uh, Ifa and Lukumi system. Um, and then I prayed over the, um, the water in Yoruba, bringing my ancestors into the space as I built a uh, kind of altar in space. And I used um, cinder blocks, a sea sand, and I don't remember the name of this kind of wood. It's the kind of chippy kind and it's super industrial. Um, but one of the things I've been thinking about a lot is the idea of materiality and how we use materials that are available to us um, to do things that are, I don't wanna say antiquated, but ancient. And so this, this ritual of, of building an altar has been around for a long time, um, but the ways that it is manifested depends on our environment. And um, I felt like this was very representative of my environment as someone from an industrial neighborhood um, and also just the, the way that I view the world and materials. Um, and then I'm going to run through this uh, pretty quickly, but I did a collection when I was in the fashion program called For Those Who Touch the Sky, inspired by traditions of masquerade dance. 
uh, in West Africa, where um, kind of spirits and deities are are represented and called into a space uh, through costume and dance and performance, but performance not as spectatorship, but as engagement. And so these are some looks that I did from that. Um, again, utilizing different materials. Uh, this second piece is made of cut up scraps of fabric from other projects um, in this and using that kind of idea of sustainability uh, in my work is nothing goes to waste. Um, and we use the you know materials that are available to us. And then these are some more. Uh, the third look in this one uh, is inspired by uh, masks. And I photoshopped the mask on top of the figure and, and designed the dress out of it that way. And then I'll go through some details on the last one. Uh, because this is kind of the most direct version of what a masquerade uh, dance would look like. And granted, there are many different kinds. Um, but this one has these large strips of ornate fabric. And um, I replaced them with these removed before flight tags that I use on bomber jackets. Um, because there's a lot of imagery of a flight in this collection as they are, you know, the, the dynamic movement uh, communicates that. And um, that is that. Let's see what we have left. And you know, going forward with fashion, um, it's what I do professionally, and uh, I think what I'm most known for. And so, this is a recent collection that I did um, that brings in a lot of those kind of seemingly esoteric and spiritual ideas into the concrete, um, being in the practice of celebrating the work of the Black Panther Party, who were very communal and uh, centered, serving the people in their work. Um, those kinds of cycles of giving and receiving and creating community um, are very present. And so um, I just wanted to bring that into, into reality. And, and I think this is the most important story that I have to tell um, as an artist and as a, de a descendant of Panthers. Um, and that I am because we are, we are because I am, and one hand to give and one hand to receive is also, uh, like I said, a big element of that circle. And so I've used the circle um on the panther on the shorts and then if you look behind the text on the hoodie there is a kind of mobius infinity loop um, that represents these ideas as well um, and i've been expanding my i guess my work internationally um, and uh, have made substantial connections in senegal and so the two images on either side were from a campaign that i shot there um, I want to say last year, maybe the year before, um, and kind of bridging that that Atlantic gap um, and and crossing that ocean uh, in in reverse, uh, kind of doing a kind of rehumanization. Um, and then lately, I've been doing a lot of uh, experimentation with fabrics and things like that, and just making work for fun. Um, and just literally for the sake of doing it, uh, which is not something I get to do in my professional practice a lot. Um, and so this was kind of an opportunity for me to bring that into my professional practice where I'm constantly just making new work. And if it sells, it sells. If it doesn't, it doesn't because I'm only making uh, a couple of things. And these are some photos uh, from the most recent Ash capsule, which are the, um, the pieces on the left. I think there was one more. Oh, no, that's it. Um, and then going forward, um, I'm expanding uh, my brand uh, to be more of a creative studio than a clothing brand. And so you guys are actually the first outside of like my close friends and my parents to see the updated branding. Uh, we have a film project coming out in maybe a month. I think a month. Yeah. Uh, which is that image on the left. And um, the Futurism Art and Design Studio, I think, really encapsulates the multifaceted nature of my practice um, and will be what I step into as I, as I leave CCA. And yeah, thank you guys so much. Wow, so impressive. <clears throat> Everyone's been just impressive so far. Um, like, Towards the end, because it's still um, in my head, you know, the later half of your presentation, you introduced 
fashion. Um, do you find that your practice when it comes to art and fashion to be like mutually exclusive or um because you know I'm not gonna speak for you but I want just with that question I just want to know from you yeah I was actually just talking about that um my they have been mutually exclusive in the past in the sense that fashion is something uh, it's, it's, it's not my product based my practice in fashion um, and I'm wanting to move into something that's more art based um, and also being able to bring the diverse set of uh, gifts and tools that I have to, to create art and tell stories uh, into a um, kind of public space. Yeah, um, and so the, the, the forward movement is them coming together seamlessly. Yeah, like immediately I saw, you know, a lot of people who invest and then divide their time up find really difficult and challenging to uh, create a bridge between, but I don't see that at all here. And I think your buildup is like visible on how that could be such a potential. Um, the content, I think the strongest aspect of what you just pretend presented was the content um, and also how you deliver it and articulate it and to be so specific to why and to develop your own philosophy is and integrate that into the subject matter is pretty impressive. Um, so uh, and I think that people don't take advantage of when people do have this hidden, I feel like people keep the secret and there's some amazing artists that do digital collages. So I really appreciate you sharing that. I remember when I was during COVID, Khalil Irving and I would talk over Zoom and he would share these digital collages with me and the process and the results are so impactful. So I hope you continue that. Thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, Sinai, thank you so much. It's it's really amazing to see this uh, this work, and um, it's like you know when you took my the the class that uh, we worked together for the first time. I think that was the mentorship class. And you had already done a really wide variety of things, and then already, but the uh, now you have done like everything had become much bigger and then deeper. So um, it's really kind of emotional for me. I don't know how many years ago that was like, you, you know, you took my class. Um, but um, um, I, I, I'm mainly thinking two things. Um, one is the those diagram has four uh, things that you received from your um, family. Um, I think that was that was amazing. And then uh, I think you intentionally chose the very first work that you showed which had the uh, two ideas, opposing ideas, and then try to connect them. And then uh, somehow that becomes the um, more activated by having two, four elements, and then which can be rotated. So uh, instead of two opposing ideas and try to bridge them. So then uh, somehow our, our community, our society, our, I think the, our, um, mind starts kind of like act activated by having that idea so and then you use that um in the form of diagram actually as it is in in your uh, uh senior thesis exhibition and then when i went saw your exhibition um okay this was that was new for uh, you know i had never seen that direction from you before so that's why i was a little bit surprised and then um try to read what was going what was going on and so you have done so many you know different things in different world and then uh film work you've done is amazing fashion is also totally amazing but the also this new direction of kind of like using the symbols like those four thing um and then make a kind of altar or something that the communities can gather around possibly um 
how does this new direction work in your uh, practice? And then uh, is it going to be like a connected to all other, you know, different things that you have been doing? Or how do you see this new direction? Yeah, thank you. Um, it's honestly, it's ironically been part of my practice for a long, long time. My senior show for arts high school uh, also featured a TV on a pedestal. Mm. Um, and it, it was obviously not anywhere near as good. Um, but I think that the way that I think about creating work is about creating spaces and, and building community. Um, and I think that my development with that um, had just become a lot more direct. Uh, when I would do fashion shows, when I started my brand, I would build sets uh, featuring many of the same materials for the models to come out and stand on or walk through. And when I was doing uh, fashion presentations in, in the nave, um, you know, showing showing my boards to, to my professors, uh, I would do that as well. And I think that what the, the shift that's happened is it's about not just what I do, but like who I am. Um, and really honing in on, on the essence of my work and then letting that come out. Um, so kind of, a, kind of that kind of process. And so I, w I am interested in doing a lot more installation work. Um, <laughs> building this installation was also in many ways a performance and a ritual um, in the sense that I, you know, I did, uh, I feel myself doing it, I, I, I prayed over it and it was a very intentional process. Right. Um, and so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing all the many ways that I can bring and present my work in, in three and four dimensions uh, and, and, and build and invite people into spaces, especially like after the pandemic where, you know, we're looking right. at a lot of our work on the screen. And I, there's something really special about, you know, from a, from a spiritual standpoint about creating a space and you know I, I brought my ancestors into that space uh -huh, and, uh -huh, right. and allowed my my community at cca to to interact with that and there's something really special about that that we just can't continue doing on you know with prints and and uh and you know screens and that hmm. that's interesting thank you so much yeah thank you thanks and i can you go back one slide I, what was exciting about this to me is we, we had this conversation in class, uh, similar to what Vicki asked about, uh, you know, how the fashion work interacts with your studio work. And you had a really nice answer about uh, the part of your studio practice, what you sort of feed off of is that it's not for anything, that it can just kind of be for itself. Um, and it looks like with this, you're merging them in a way and what, or, or inventing something entirely new. And I like the way you've set this up because an art and design studio seems like it could be anything you want it to be. You can, you can define what art and design studio means and throw anything in there, which I think is a pretty uh, confident and exciting sort of place to stake out for yourself at this moment. So, and the other thing, you know, you talked a lot about the, the cyclical nature of things and um, and the quote about one hand, um, I'm not gonna get it just right, but one hand kind of receiving and one hand giving. And I just wanna say, that's that's how I felt your presence in the classroom and your, your sort of generosity towards your peers, which I really appreciate and I, I found to be true of the class as a whole, which I really appreciate. And I noted that you and Sky both referred to um, creating spaces and building community as part of the central sort of priorities of your work. So, um, you know, <laughs> I see you every week, but we have a different kind of conversation in this format. And it just makes me feel fortunate to have worked with all of you this semester. Um, we're going to wrap it up there. Thanks. Thanks for your presentation, Sanai. Yeah, thank you um, guys so much. Yeah. Pai, you are next. Do you want to go ahead and share your screen? Hi.
Hi, can everyone hear me? Okay. Yes, yes. Hello, my name is Pai. I'm major in individualized study in CCA and currently based in San Francisco. I grew up in South of China, an immigrant city with dynamic culture. I moved and traveled around to many countries and cities. The culture, languages, social standards, traditions, and architecture style shape my belief, values, and idea of making art. My creative pursuits have taken me from 2D drawing to 3D projects, and I've explored a variety of art forms using different approaches and techniques. I take pleasure in experimenting with various media and translating my artist's idea into different forms. It's capacitating to me how different art forms can be used to express the same message of feeling. Whether it's drawing, painting, or sculpture, I love the process of creating something new and unique that reflects my perspective on the world. Here are some examples of my art inspo. My work is inspired by a range of influence, including the innate majesty of the arts, fairy tales, astrology, animals, and scenes that resonate with me in my daily life. This influence serve as my guides and inform the direction of my work. I think that inspiration can come from many things and places, and I'm constantly on the lookout for new sources of creating inspiration to incorporate into my practice. Here is some graphic design work. These are gift stickers I made for text message chatting. Illustrations are expressive and fun emojis. Each of them show different daily mood and tells a story. The imagery come from my drawing and I process them into digital animation. People can purchase these sticker packs online for their own use. I publish the sticker for free use. People can also send me money as gift for using my stickers and I got feedback from users. It was a new way of publishing my work and interact with others to share my art online. Mm. For this series was inspired by Japanese emoji. It's called Kamoji. It's a pictorial cartoon face using characters and punctuation, marks, number, and letters. I published this because a lot of people are using Kamoji and this is my animated take on them to make it more understandable and accessible. Throughout my year of textile practice, I have a career skill in weaving on a loom, diving fabrics with plants and material found in my surrounding, felting, printing, and sewing. I take great pleasure in transforming pattern onto fabric using traditional and natural craftsmanship techniques. My preference lies with working with soft material and vibrant color inspired by the natural world. Learning about how different plants create pigments has altered my relationship with the natural world. It has helped me appreciate the beauty and the wonder of nature in a whole new way. By incorporating this organic color into my work, I'm able to create unique and meaningful pieces that reflect the beauty of the world around us. This, uh, 
I weave. Oh, sorry. Oh, I think this is. Oh, this project invite me to create a wearable garment for talismanic purpose. And the intention behind this piece is for it to imbue me with a sense of protection and power when I wear it. To achieve this, I employ a variety of techniques ranging from cochineal and indigo dyeing to, to engineer printing and the screen print clay resist. For this piece, I wanted to capture the fresh and energizing feeling that comes with the start of the season. I create a woven tapestry using the pink shades of cherry blossom and the bright greens of growing wheat. I also incorporate flying insects and the ringing bells into the garden. I enjoy playing around with these color and motifs and creating something that reflects the natural beauty and the liveliness of the time of the year. I, I create decorated textile cocoons of wire structures, symbolizing the structure nature of homes and the feeling of safety and the comfort they provide. The soft yarn wrap around the wire represents a sense of disconnection from the outside world, further emphasizing the idea of the home as a statutory. And here uh, is a series of ceramic sculpture I create. The small birds with crochet hats symbolizing piety and devotion. These birds gather around at a magic felt serving our guardian angel, protecting the central figure of a crucified phoenix on the wall. The contrast between the soft crochet and the strong ceramic material reflects the balance between fragility and strength. The overall composition speaks to the theme of protection and sacrifice. Uh, At my senior show last week, I showcased a space called the Bird Planet, combine my ceramic bird and textile cocoons into a cohesive installation. Through this work, I explored the idea of transformation in life and represent the circle of birth and death. The space was designed to immerse viewer in a world where the bird and cocoon symbolize the journey of life from birth to death and beyond. Lastly, special thanks to Mother Earth, Father Sky, and all living things on Earth. I will rest my face and give my future to the universe. Keep growing, keep building my planet, and have as much fun as I can. Thank you. Thanks, Pai. <laughs> One thing I noticed about like all the work you shared is that your signature is present or the DNA is consistent throughout, even su with such range in medium. Um, would you consider yourself an artist that challenges themselves with limited time and materials and subconsciously or consciously will execute something very unique and original and then have you also been sensitive to the result of it where there is your dna present can you say say your question again i didn't hear it well sorry yeah um I would, well, I would say that like your DNA in your work is very present in such range in materials and form, Phot photography through sculpture, through like mixed media, um, and even like digital illustrated gifts. Um, I was wondering if you're if you're an artist that challenges themselves with like uh, 
with like limited materials and the results are consistent and are you aware of, of that that like that signature is present in your work um i always just um develop new materials and new ways to create my art mm -hmm. and also i like to not just combining the traditional handmade craftsmanship i also like to use different technologies like i can i can co collaborate with the traditional craftsmanship mm -hmm. yeah yeah, I'm like inspired because like even the way that you arrange things, they're like tangled intentionally. Um, it's everything's so complicated and like all the materials that you use and the processes that you you apply are very like, you know, not conventional. And so like it's very playful and there's something um, like there's a make believe quality to your to the work that I saw today. Thank you. Okay, Th thank you, Pai. Uh, I was smiling, laughing at you because you're funny, but also you're so serious, you know, and you're so crazy and uh, you're such a genius and I love your work so much. And, um, as Vicky said, definitely, you know, whatever you actually use, you, we can easily see that's being your work. And then I don't know what's going on, but the, it's always like a you imprint. Uh, you're this kind of amazing, like, um, um, uh, what, how can I describe this? Um, very strange aesthetics to it. And then, mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, is even like those uh, NFT things uh, also definitely, you know, your work and the digital work illustration also. But when it comes to fabric and then um, those crochet, um, yeah, that's definitely it's totally connected with those digital works. And um, so, and the ceramic work was also interesting and also the i'm glad that you kind of tapped into the ceramic and then that expand your work into your uh, installation and then that installation in the uh the final exhibition that's the last uh, last week was amazing it's exploding it's um i loved it so much um i my question is the um your work before, especially in the time that you, you were working in the digital format, often your work always have a kind of like a characters there, kind of creatures or, um, yeah, those things. But it seems like this uh, installation was more about this life and death, the idea of cocoon and how you can actually create the feeling of protection without having the uh, characters right so um how do you see that change or the, is that kind of is that because like you started seeing more like uh, in a bigger scale uh in installation that's why you started losing this idea of characters or the you know creatures or yeah i'm kind of curious about that i think i really like to make characters before because i feel like there are something that come from my soul they are like part of me and right now I feel like maybe I grew up and I let go of my ego. So now I just <laughs> <laughs> Yes. And so I'm seeing other things rather than just myself. Yeah. Do you think this idea of cocoon that came from your experience of like a pandemic? Because I, I remember you, you know, how much like, you know, psychologically you had been suffering during the, you know, this kind of Zoom classes that you hated. And so is it kind of like a, <laughs> related to that? No, it's because after I came to America, I just miss home a lot. Yeah. Ah, interesting. So it's, you. It's after uh, pandemic. Especially, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And then you started making this, this idea of cocoon around yeah, you. Yeah, and also the birds is like represent yeah, yeah. me flying away from home, being away from home as well. Yes. 
you see your your concept is so um emotional so serious but also kind of funny you know so it's 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 really amazing thank you so much thank, thank you, you so much for being in this world you know <laughs> thank you taro <laughs> you are also um in cca you are also my motivation to create <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you so good i i like seeing those emojis relative to your knittings a lot and uh I, I, it didn't occur to me until seeing this presentation, but I wonder how or if there's a if there's a way in your future where those things come together, like um, so that we see the I don't know. I just there's a way that those those emoji uh, gifts are so simple, but so you. Everyone's talking about all the work being you. And I wonder if there's a way that the the knitting the networks have a similar like echoing effect. Um, anyway, I think this is one of the beautiful things about being asked to put together these presentations. As you see that through line, right? Like the work is the work, but the pie is everything, right? You see what links all of the things you made to you and your character. And I think Tara was trying to find the right the the words to to fill in and the the word that popped into my mind was joy right yeah um, there's these creatures and these characters and i think he said strange aesthetic so if you multiply strange aesthetic times joy there's something about your work in that space um were there any other thoughts yeah um, i yeah i just yeah. i agree with that like i would say like there is this energy with the outcome of your work. Um, and it's like very like untamed. It's almost like deliberate and in intentionally impulsive, which is like a lot of times artists do filter themselves self a lot through their processes. So like, you know, preserve whatever is, you know, working for you and continue to explore materials and other processes because I'm sure that the results will be as enigmatic as what I saw today yeah thank you yeah all right thanks Pi great work um okay our last artist of this evening is Madison Brooks oh god <laughs> okay it's good hello yep. yes it's good okay good. hello good evening everyone my name is madison brooks and this is my 2023 senior thesis talk um i grew up in the south bay which is a beach town in la um in high school i found a love for photography ceramics and painting i would mainly paint on like large wood panels with house paint from home depot um, to the left, you can see one of my latex paintings um, on a wood panel I did when I was a junior. And then to the lower right is a photo of a painting show I had at Schold Brewery and some of my early works as well. Um, I began coordinating art shows my junior year of high school, learning how to collaborate with other young artists who were musicians, photographers, painters, and multimedia artists, and really connecting with other people who had like a rigorous practice already going and a compulsion to create as well. And then eventually everyone went to different art schools and I chose to enroll at SFAI, which closed in 2020. And then I transferred to CCA and am here with you today. Um, I found continued inspiration from Red Groom's ability to climax the mundane and capture the crowded vibrancy within cityscapes, which I intend to do within my sculpture and in my paintings as well. Ramesh Mario Nithyendran, who explores global histories and languages of figurative representation and sees clay in like a philosophical way in relation to the earth and the body and pushes conventional building tactics. I feel inspired by their um, irreverent approach to ceramic media and their broad material choices inspire me to explore within my own current practice. My work is currently motivated by the strong sense of connection and identity I found to San Francisco's Mission District. 
I found an obligation to document the historically iconic buildings um, while being weary of the inevitable hypergentrification occurring. Being a mission resident, I spend a majority of my time walking around the mission, rooting to my first series, Common Ground, which was at, on show at um, the mill recently, but is now not anymore. Um, I'm more often <laughs> walking around alone, but I've never felt alone because I'm experiencing so many other solo walkers. And then my oil painting to the left is titled, If This Isn't Nice, What Is? Referencing a photo I took on 24th and Mission. And then the oil painting on the right is titled Jazz Man, is an ode to my old neighborhood, Bernal Hill, but mainly my old roommate who tagged in the back of the sign on Mission in 26 uh, before the pandemic, which has now been painted over. Jasmine acknowledges the semi-permanent presence of our immediate surroundings, which may be buffed or painted over or rebuilt completely, but in this current time still lives in our architecture. Aiming to build a world around my paintings with my sculptures, the physicality and the craft of ceramics allows me to pull different images and staples of this quickly changing city and preserve them in clay and glaze. By doing this, I'm able to pay an homage that will last a boundless period of time, which I've done in Cone Age. It's my series of 16 ceramic traffic cones. It's a reference to the constant construction and maintenance of the surfaces and physical systems of the city and their effects on how people move around them. The modified landscapes, disruption of personal space and creating obstacles to walk around. Okay, this is Yesterday's Treasures, which is my first painting created in the series Common Ground. Um, I decided to create an installation with this piece and include the cones to amplify the show um, and to really show the control these objects hold to our everyday life and movement through city spaces and streets. Um, and then I began to combine photographs and take on kind of like a collage-like perspective with my paintings while only including one subject shown in my piece titled um, Common Ground. In my piece, If Crayons Could Talk, I use my work to really exert energy rather than to plan an immediate outcome and in conversation with a series of sculptures I will show you in a minute. And then this painting, Birds on the Block, um, once a year I do a realistic painting and Birds on the Block was my painting this year, which I just, I explore the formal qualities of painting, color, line, shape, light, composition, and texture. And then altering the formal possibilities to construct my own world which my most recent work has evolved to be shown in this painting. And then drawing inspiration from my current job at a preschool in the inner sunset, I began writing a children's book, um, Street Boy. It's a book about a coyote who lives in Golden Gate Park, but his dream is to live in a city and he has no idea he already lives there. Creating the drawings for Street Boy led me into creating a series of dog sculptures like this is Big Bad John. He's 40 inches by 16 inches and he watches me while I sleep. Um, I don't think I ever wanna part with him, but this is Little John. First, I named him Big Bad John in all lower cases. And I thought it was like really clever, like a clever name. Like I was like, little, you know? Um, but it didn't work because like in shows they capitalize the names already. So it, like they were just named the same thing. So I had to, so now I was Little John. And then these are my twin dogs, which are my most recent dogs. And then currently, oh, this is my children's chair as well. Also inspired by working at the preschool. And then currently I'm working on a series of trophies, um, aiding to my compulsion to constantly be created. But the trophies are open to interpretation. They mean something different to everyone, whatever that may mean to you. But, Here's some detail photos of them as well. And that's my contact information. And then following graduation, um, I plan to have more shows and I currently have a solo exhibition at Valencia Street Vintage on view until May 24th and a group show at Slug Bar Oakland in collaboration with Good Mother Gallery and then a group exhibition at Gallery Grunge. And then a group show at Bass and Rainer at Minnesota Street Project until May 6th.
Thank you. Thanks, Madison. Yep. Did anybody want to go first or should I? Well, I was just going to say one thing first, which is that I didn't work with Madison this semester, but we worked together last year. And sometimes I think in other cases, we might worry about a student who doesn't have a senior projects class their final semester, but um, we did not worry about Madison. Every time I walked into that studio, you were working, and I really appreciate that about you, that you're generating work all the time. Um, yeah, and I'm excited you're doing one of the best things that you can do, which is to like plan your next shows, or in your case, five shows. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madison. Um, Unfortunately, I have never worked with you, and then uh, that's the big regret I have. And <laughs> because <laughs> you're now graduated and uh, graduating, and it's amazing work. Um, I love your uh, corn series, and also those dogs are amazing. So so cute. And um, what's interesting is the this trophy series, and I have a question about this because the your paint you know you, you, your painting is amazing actually it has its own style and i have some question and some questions fl uh, floating in my head about the paintings also but the the main the fir first question i want to ask is actually um this trophy series and this since until that point what you had been making is kind of traffic corn of course it's symbolic but it's traffic corn and then dogs are dogs of course it's symbolic but the uh, dogs right but trophy of course it's trophy is the um actual object that we live with sometimes but the trophy itself is a, from the beginning it's a, such a symbolic object you know that's something that we receive when we win something right mm -hmm. and then um so the nature of objects seems to be a little bit different from, you know, those things that you actually took from your everyday life, dogs and corns and then uh, chairs. Um, so uh, what, 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 what is, how is it different uh, in your uh, making proce process in this trophy series? Because um, it's, it's, it's purely symbolic, almost like, uh, I don't know, postmodernistic kind of, uh, you know, um, uh, symbolism going on so how do you see that series yeah definitely I think with well starting with um starting working at the preschool I think I was considering like I don't know just like my experiences with like the children and like how they always need like this reassurance and like how it's like this like competitive aspect and then also like my own competitive aspect like growing up and like competing in like the whole idea of the trophy right, right, right. making the children's chair was supposed to be like a soapbox you know, like, and it's supposed to be like your voice being heard from this small object, even though it's like a children's chair, people don't want to listen to children really. But um, I don't know, the trophies, I, I still am like working on contextualizing them because I've made them so recently. But you, sorry, Madison, to interrupt, could you put them back up on the screen? Can you share your sure. screen again and put that? It's nice to look at that work. Yeah, yeah. Right, here we go. Um, interesting. You know. Hmm. So you you're basically dealing with this idea of winning. Winning may not be the right word, but the you know you came through this competitive uh, environment, and you know the, today, like wherever you our um, you know environment is kind of competitive that you need to somehow win kind of this win culture i really hate but they also um is this trophy and also the your style kind of critically address that number one you know <laughs> trophy thing so uh yeah it's 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 funny um yeah i want to know more about this how it functions in your in your mind yeah 
I think growing up, I was um, I was a competitive cheerleader for a really long time. Uh, so I think I think about that as well. That definitely plays a pretty big part in it. But I think in a lot of places in like how it just never goes away. You know, like how like those, you know. Right. That's interesting that you brought cheerleading because it's so rich and minted. And um, I feel like what I'm seeing perpetually is like the subversion of that being communicated. Um, it's cool that you like Ravesh Dindran. I always bring that artist up because I myself am inspired by him um, and his like just like visceral nature and his expression and how that is captured in these like loose forms. Um, there's, it's their paintings itself is like so evocative of like the essence of the Bay Area. Um, mm -hmm. And like the funk movement in particular, I think about like Viola Fry and Rob Arneson. And they're, I, when I look at your paintings, I, I I feel movement and I I hear sound and like music too, um, and it's almost like it's almost like you're revisiting an experience, um, and the objects that you shared too, you know, like this is how I described your work descriptively: fun, alive, active, sad, romantic, funky, and chunky. You know. Um, <laughs> There's like character in your work. And I I really hope that you continue taking more risks. And I think that it'll only result in such exciting work. Madison, yeah. can you go can you go back up one more to the, the last set of dogs you made? Yeah. I like the tonal shift in this. There's like a these are a little bit more refined than the other dogs. Yeah. They still have like blingy collars. But there's something they feel like you, I don't know, you got control of the form or something not quite as chunky, but um, I like that there's a little bit of difference um, as that work progresses and that they're like their qualities of their skin are a little different. Anyway, it just caught my eye as we were going through them because I hadn't seen those before. Yeah. Is it like the Vicky um, included sad? Did, did you include sad in the description of uh, Madison's work? No, funky and chunky. Oh, okay, okay. I thought I thought you said sad also. Oh, because, sad. Yeah. yeah, sad. Yeah, and romantic. It's very. There's like such layers of moods happening. Yeah, M Madison, could you talk about it? Okay, we are seeing this twin dog. It is a really a funny cute but definitely it's a sadness there and am i right is it, am i reading something yeah i think you are, <laughs> you are yeah right. yeah it's so it's so kind of depressing to see these dogs like you know especially with those colors also and then um and then happy faces and then so you know like a, they're, they're gonna follow us right and oh it's yeah so sad yeah could you talk I more about did this um i created these the day after I had um, my first solo exhibition show and it was like, just my, my, my social battery was so drained and I was alone for so long, like making all this work, you know? And then I suddenly was just like around like so many people. And, um, and then I made these like the morning after and I just like, I don't know, I was really overthinking like how just as, like as an artist, like, it's like such a solitary practice like you're by yourself but then you just are exposed to like so to these crazy social events like I don't know so I was thinking about that and then also just being away from my work was like it was really different too like I didn't have all my work around me so I wasn't creating work like my work that I was existing with before like it was just like in like an empty studio so it was kind of odd but yeah, there's an inviting quality to your work. And I think that's really hard to do when, like, I think 
your work itself if you just spend a moment a minute uh, of investment like there's so much that's being conveyed is that like something intentional that you do I think so yeah I really think so because usually like yeah I'll finish a lot on a piece in like one sitting but it's me like exerting all of like that energy into it mm -hmm. And also, wel welcome to the uh, the world of fine art. It's like having a, the, every time you have a show. I think after that, like you get depressed also. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, for now, with my social batteries, that it's getting <laughs> charging. It's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I totally hear that. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing this work. This is amazing. Thank you. I really appreciate all of your comments. Thanks, Madison. Um, and thanks everybody for signing in and participating. Um, one of the other students asked me, was Taylor asked me last week or the week before why I like teaching. And I have that warm, fuzzy feeling right now about like, I like teaching because I get to do this because I get to work with all of you. And it feels like a real privilege this semester that I got to work with so many of you outside my home program and see like if just the four of you tonight, the range of your work is a great example of what we do at CCA. And you can feel in each of your practices and the work that you put forward, like that individual and distinctive energy that is very much yours. So congratulations on your shows and graduating. And um, thanks for being here. It's a privilege to work with all of you.